you're obviously glowing because look at you. Honey, that's just sweat. Look but at thank you. you. <laughs> no, you really are, Obviously, we're drawing each other or painting each other, and I'm obviously looking at this gorgeous, glowing green and pink goddess. So, yeah. anything with gold, I think just basically your whole vibe. Cute. Yours is gonna doing. be like an aura photo. I'm gonna capture your photo. spirit. <gasps> yeah. I love that, because we were you're speaking about star signs. Yeah. And I feel like I'm trying to include some of that in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That as well? The watery yeah, vibes, yeah, the watery course. vibes. Oh, yes. yes. Oh, yes. Right, well, while we get into the art of it all, let's get into the the connection of it all. Let's really do it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's so right tell in. me, how did you get into doing what it is that you do now? So I got into social media and kind of talking about my transition and everything. Mm -hmm. Oh my God, I'm nervous about drawing. I, I don't know, I just, well, I hadn't come out as trans originally um, on TikTok yet, and that's basically what I mostly do. Mm -hmm. And then one day I just thought, there are so many people that I looked up to when I was doing, um, when I was younger, when I was transitioning at the beginning of my transition. And I never really had spoken about it before. I just thought I need to start speaking about my journey. Yeah. I need to like share my truth. Yeah. And there was definitely like a lot of backlash or whatever, but like it was the best thing I ever did. And I'm so, it was weird because I'd already like come out and everyone who knew me knew I was trans, but it was like the internet didn't quite know yet. Yeah. This was really early on. Yeah. And no, I'm glad I did it. And I just, I feel like now I've, I feel like I'm not trying to hit my own horn. I feel like I've helped some people. And yeah. I mean, I'm listen, glad I've done it. The haters are going to hate, but the dolls will still doll. Right. The fact that we're still here and doing what we do. Absolutely. The fact that you're here and like sharing such a big story as well, like online. I mean, like. Thank you. How about you? How did you get into How did I get into doing what I do? Well, I mean, first off, I wasn't even this person. I was still cosplaying as a cis gay man at the time. We love so, that. Um, I got fired from a publication that I worked for, tried to start another publication, had that stolen from me. And I was like, I'm no longer gonna put any of my energy mm -hmm. into anything else or anyone else. I'm gonna really focus on just trying to do something for me for once. Mm -hmm. um, and that's when then lockdown also happened. Mm -hmm. So I was in my room and learning how to do makeup better and talking about the things that are happening in the world, just like you said, like th there were so many days that I would wake up and I'd feel so disillusioned with everything because it's like, oh yeah, maybe we are progressing. Maybe there's a little bit of representation here and there, but like, what does that actually mean right. when every single day, another person that looks like me or identifies like me is like found dead. Mm -hmm. it's and like not even, not even just like murdered, like found dead. You know what I mean? It's, it's a completely different kind of existence. And I needed to make sense of how I was feeling. Mm -hmm, absolutely. And I had no idea of how to make sense of how I was feeling. Um, so rather than posting the thirst traps that she was doing as you know, when she was cosplaying, mm -hmm. um, she decided to realize herself a little bit more and now I'm here. I love that. And you're obviously glowing because look at you. Honey, that's just sweat, look but thank you. you. <laughs> no, what advice would you give to a young queer person who just wants to be unapologetically themselves? Okay. Loaded question. Yeah, very loaded, because mm -hmm. I feel like whenever you answer this question, it's important to either say that you're answering it just from your perspective, yeah. or try and like accommodate all experiences. Mm -hmm. So what I'm gonna do is try and accommodate all experiences. What okay. I would say to a young person who is struggling to be authentically themselves is, in the same way that whether it is if you're at school or college or whatever, you know, there's a health and safety risk assessment. Mm -hmm. Do a risk assessment of your surroundings. You mm -hmm. need to know who you can be like that around, how you can be like that around them as well. Because yes, there's, there's acceptance, but there's varying degrees of acceptance. I knew that when I was younger, going through uh, the changes that I was experiencing in the way that I wanted to identify, I remember always thinking, okay, I can't go too far, but what can I do? I can make myself feel as close to that thing as possible. Mm -hmm. um, when I had to work in 
and I, well, when I had to work in a luxury department store, and I, um, yeah, and I had to wear suits. I would literally make my own underwear out of like velour and lace, and like Slay. so at the base, I was still fe- feeling like fishy, feminine, fresh. Mm-hmm, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm, um, mm-hmm. And and also, by the way, for anyone questioning whether I can use that, it originated in ballroom, and it's absolutely. A black term. Oh, I know. So don't police my language. I haven't known you too long, so I want to know what your first pride was like. My first pride, okay, so I don't remember my first pride, but my mum and dad, who were very supportive and lovely and amazing and I love them. Mm. My first pride, I believe, was in London or Brighton. I was born in, I was brought up in Brighton, I was born in London. Mm. I I don't know, but my mum tells me a story about the time where they took me out um, in pride, uh, to pride, and I saw there was a, a beautiful drag queen there. And apparently I was absolutely in awe of her and just absolutely obsessed. And I think I was really young, something like three. Oh, I um, love that. So that was probably my first pride. My first pride that I can remember, I don't know. Just growing up in Brighton, I would always go, my parents would always take me, we'd go and see the parade. Yeah. You know, it didn't, I mean, pride gets better as you get older because you know, every, you start to know more people mm-hmm. and you can drink and you can have fun and do whatever. Um, which is definitely, I think that's actually something that gets better with age. Pride will get better as you get older because you know more people. Yeah. And you can enjoy the vibe a little bit more. Yeah. What about you? My first Pride, I remember like my last episode of Sleep Paralysis. Oh, really? It was, Tell me about it. So my first Pride was, it wasn't great because I felt left out everywhere I went. I went on my own. Okay. And finally plucked up the courage to go up to this one guy who was dancing with a whole group of his friends and I went up to them and started dancing and I thought that we were all vibing it was cool I wasn't trying to like hit on anyone and they go oh like you're really nice but I'm just not into black guys and that for me like it you're not was even just, trying to it's not even that like vibe. I'm not like one who asked you yeah right uh who said that I was going that way but like not only that it's like there's other ways to so say much. you're not interested in a person that doesn't... Without offending them. Yeah, that doesn't so, make it about something that is so, fundamentally unchangeable. No, exactly. It's so wrong. The um, thing is, like, all when you're out in public, people will tr- people will assume of you, I guess, what they also think, what they are also doing. Mm-hmm. So if you're out and you're on the pull and someone comes up to you and the only thing that you can think about is being on the pull, then that's also what you're going to do. That does exactly. not mean I am excusing you, young sir. Yeah, exactly. But, um, yeah, I I don't know. I'm not sure. I don't I don't I don't really vibe with it. I'm gonna say that my first real Pride experience was the first time I went to UK Black Pride. So as as my single girlfriend, my single doll friend, mm-hmm. um, what has your experience been like being out openly trans on dating sites? So. What I do is, which I didn't used to do, so now I've gotten a little bit older, um, I put trans in my bio before anyone sees it, even though you can use it as an option, but I just have my name and then in brackets I have trans. Mm-hmm. And I feel like for me, I think the mo- the worst thing about dating and being trans for me personally is the conversation, like, oh, by the way, mm-hmm. I'm trans. And sometimes it's fine, sometimes it's not. We, You know what I mean? It is what it is. And... So I just put it in my bio now so I don't have to go through that awkwardness. And since I've done that, I've found it a lot easier. And I found like there's almost like this stigma that's just not there anymore. So if you don't like me, don't swipe. And that's not your thing or whatever. So I just, yeah, I just kind of, I put it there and I feel like that's actually really done well for me. And I think that, you know, I really wasn't a data and I actually am enjoying it a little bit more. And I feel like you've definitely inspired me as well with, you know, you you know, you met your partner on Tinder and you've been together ever since. And I just love that. And I yeah. definitely do want something like that at some point. So I love that. And I do like using Tinder for that purpose. Like it is a really great way to find people, especially like living in London. Mm-hmm. And you can find whatever you want over, yeah. the, over there. It's great. I think I remember also when I was using the app, just like, I don't know. I feel like it, there was a different energy when you were just completely forward about your identity. Like me, like, for example, I remember, because before I started getting my hair braided really long, too, Mm -hmm. it was quite either mask or really femme. And it's quite nice that, like, you can present however you want, show everything, but then also, I don't know, 
feels like the crowd is nice. You know what I mean? Yeah, When you absolutely. walk into the room, you know that the room is nice. Yeah, I get you yeah, completely. Yeah, it's that kind of absolutely. thing. Absolutely, I get that vibe. I don't know what I've done here, but okay. are we ready to show? I don't know why I did you so strong on, but I feel like you look kind of like a strong, powerful. Thank you. Thing. I did you like a, like a soft fairy. I love that. This is me. Stun. Yeah, that's my, that's the energy. Just she like steps the into the room and she said, "What's up?" Yeah, really. You've got a little wind machine going on here. The eyes are very dramatic. It's all kind of very dramatic. Mm. It's just very yeah, intense. Yeah, she draws you in. She's a siren. Absolutely. Yeah. 